a meeting. Okay. Mayor Andino is the CEO of the Institute of Applied Human Dynamics, Inc. Even with her busy schedule, she's always ready to share her love of cooking and other talents. Do you know why? Because she loves her community so much. And today it's my pleasure to present our Mayor Andino. It's all yours. Thank you, Swati. Thank you. <laughs> she is always, always has me blushing. She's very kind. Um, I do love cooking. And I, for those of you who do not know me, I think um, there are most of you on here have been in my kitchen with me either by Zoom or actually some of you in person. Um, so I'm very glad to be here with you this evening. Um, so today, this is my home. For those of you who've never come on, if this is your first time, um, we're gonna make something that's really simple. Um, we call it bacalaitos. I would love to hear everyone say that. Bacalaitos. Bacalaitos. Yeah. Bacalaito. Bacalaito. Very nice. Bacalaitos. I was practicing. <laughs> Bacalaitos. And um, so it's basically it's catfish, catfish fritters. And it's um it's a dish that is pretty typical as a snack in the West Indian community, including in Puerto Rico. And my mom makes it all the time. I love hers. Um, but I've adapted it to, um, to my liking. And it, it's a very forgiving recipe. So it's very easy to make. And I just want to know if there is anyone that's going to be cooking along with me today. If you are, unmute and say yes, so that I know um, how to proceed. If you're just watching, then I might do things a little differently to speed things up. So everybody's just watching me on Food Network. <laughs> Yes. That's cool. Uh, okay, yes. so I already have a few takers that are saying, you know, are you going to bring me some um, bacalaitos? And, and I have a feeling that um, there are a few others that might want some. So what I'm going to do today is, first of all, um, I sent out the, the recipe. I don't know if the recipe was posted. Swati Shani Lane, I think it yes, was. Yes, the recipe was attached to the uh, calendar. And if anybody okay. needs it, we can send it to them after this. All right, so you, you guys have it. So I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, and you guys have the list of ingredients. Um, I've added a few because some of the residents were really nice enough to call me and say, we have some fresh peppers or some tomatoes from some gardens here. Um, and so I decided I'm going to put some of that in there. And when you make your, so your bacalaitos, you can add anything that you'd like. So my brothers, they like it with uh, just the scallions, um, which are the green, the green onions, if anyone does not know what they are. These, this scallion, I actually used all the way down to the root, and then I just put it in water, and there you have more scallions. So that's a little trick. If you want to just grow some scallions on your own, when you buy some in the store, save the root, put it in water, you'll have more scallions. Cool, 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 cool tip. Uh, so some people just like it with the scallions and some cilantro. I actually don't have cilantro because I used it to make my sofrito, which I've done in previous class and I could do again, um, but it's okay. It's still gonna taste good. So just to let you know, I have been soaking salted codfish. Um, and so salted codfish, you can buy them in a packet. I'll show you one packet I have here. Um, I keep these, they're very easy to make a lot of great things, but um, I keep these in the freezer because I can make a uh, stewed codfish. I can make a quick codfish salad if I have guests. So I always try to keep something that's fast for me to make. And I bought this, I have not found, I think you at Stop and Shop, they have some salted codfish, but I think it's not in this package, but you can just look for any salted, they have pollock, they have codfish, any of the salted fish, white fish would work. So that's, uh, that's just a little quick trip. So I've been soaking it overnight. Uh, and this is um, a pound. I'm not gonna use the entire pound, what we're gonna do is we're gonna boil some of the salt, even though you've, you've uh, 
even though you've soaked it, you want to make sure that the batter is not too salty. So you're going to boil some of it. And I've already started to have some water boil. So you're gonna put some of the codfish in there and you can put it all in there and use some of it and then use the rest to make uh, like a bacalao salad, which I have, someone has requested <laughs> that I make. So we can make that another time. I have made that in the past. And while that is boiling, you don't want it to boil too long because you don't want to take all of the salt out. So maybe five minutes. And I literally will put the timer on once it starts boiling, which is pretty close. So I put the timer on so I don't forget. And in the meantime, I'm just cutting up the, the, the vegetables that are going to go into the batter. I so have I a have, question. Yes, I'm listening. Uh, I am on a low salt diet. Yes. And I would not like to have it too salty. So one way is, as you said, put it in the boiling water for five minutes. Let's say I want to have it even less salt in it because I don't want my blood pressure to go up. Would you recommend that I cook it longer or is there any other way to reduce the salt even more? If you, um, if you soak it overnight, change the water two or three times, uh -huh. you, can, you can still um, boil it in water and then taste after five minutes. Because okay, that's a good it, idea. Right, depending on how much um, salt is in it and depending on how much you right, boil. Right, right. And then you can taste it and you'll know. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So you want to have as much or as little, again, this is very forgiving. So I'm going to use, you know, a small bunch of the scallions. Just dice them up and you want to make sure that they're diced small. And I also have some onion here just because I like onion in mine, but it's not a requirement. Some people like um, bell peppers, some don't. Don't use bell peppers if you don't like it. And you can easily make this with just the codfish, some water, uh, flour, and black pepper, and it's delicious. So this is, like I said, um, a very forgiving dish and an easy dish to make. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna make a mistake. So I'm just gonna cut up um, some onions, dice them up very finely. And the other thing that's important, and I've mentioned it when I've done other classes, is to make sure you have knives that are very sharp. Cooking with dull knives is, is very trouble, is troubling. You know, you can't get things cut fast enough. It's, it's, you know, your, your arm starts hurting if you're cutting, let's say, chicken. So make sure that you sharpen your knife. And if you have a cooking block, a knife block, like this one, usually there is a sharpener in there. If you didn't know what this thing was, it wasn't to beat your husband. It's to sharpen your knives. <laughs> so you, um, to sharpen the knife, you want to go against, at the edge, go against it like you're sharpening downward and make sure you are you don't have this close to you. And it's, it's really easy. Sometimes um, I've had friends who've told me I'm throwing my knives out and getting new knives. And I said, why? They said, they're dull. I'm like, all you have to do is sharpen them. So it's good to buy knives that where you see the, the, the metal go right through. See that? So just a few tips that I've, I've learned along the way. I watch a lot of Food Network. I like to eat. So I learned to cook. Anybody have any questions? See how much easier? Just going right through. Any questions? So this is- um, yeah. uh, Are certain knives better than others? Um, well, you know what's interesting? I have been testing that out. So my favorite knives are these knives, and I'm not doing a commercial, but cut, these are cut cone knives. A friend of mine called me and said, my niece is selling knives. Could you please help? <laughs> so I called her up. I got a few knives. I love these knives. I have them. They're them. amazing. They really are amazing. Yeah. However, I have also purchased, uh, where, is, where is this? I've also purchased a knife from Brandless. Has anybody heard of Brandless? 
Is there any residue from sharpening on the knife? No, there is no residue. Uh, it's metal, like metal on metal, and it doesn't really come off. Somebody just asked that. But um, brandless is a very inexpensive way. The, the name of the knives is Cutco, C-U-T-C-O. And Elaine and Swadish, if I miss any questions, please throw them out there because I'm not always looking at the chat. So uh, Brandless, I bought a knife from them just to test it out. And the knife, I think, was 10 bucks. And it, it's, it's a beautiful knife and it works perfectly just as well as this one does. So five minutes have passed. I'm going to test the catfish. Test a little bit of it. That's good enough for me. I want a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna drain that. Now, usually I'll keep a little bit of the, the codfish in the water while I'm still cutting up the veggies so that it doesn't dry out. You don't want to let the codfish sit once it's boiled without being in water because it'll be dry and then you'll have chunks of hard codfish in your fritters and nobody wants that. Like your uh, tongs. Say again. I like your tongs. Okay. Uh, these are Cuisinart. Cuisinart oh. tongs. Okay. Yeah, I love them. I love them also. I've had Cutco knives for sixty-three years. Wow, that is amazing. Wow. Pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Um, the only thing I don't like is, well, they've started to sell online now, but prior to that, they you had to go through a broker for someone that was selling them. So uh, I think someone else had a question. Someone else had a question. Wait, I just want to know, if you don't eat fish, what vegetable can you use to make fritters? You can also make, um, if you don't eat fish, you can make shrimp fritters. Okay. Shrimp and dice it up. You can also make some sweet fritters. Like I'll make banana fritters if I have a lot of bananas and don't feel like making banana bread or something. Then I'll make um, banana fritters. So there's a lot of things you can do with with a little bit of flour and water. Um, oh, that's a great idea for bananas. Yeah, banana fritters are really good. Um, so everybody, I always talk about the food scrapping program. In Tuckahoe, if you live in Tuckahoe, and I think also in, there's some people here from White Plains that, that you also have a, um, a food scrapping program. So I keep my food scrapping bowl with the bag in it next to me every time I'm cooking. And I always play this, this game with myself to see how much more fresh vegetables and, and fruits I'm eating than processed. And then I'll, I'll, I'll measure out both, I'll look at both my garbage bag and my food scrapping and hope that I'm using more of the food scrapping bag. That's just a little thing for me. So what I'm going to do now is you're oh, going to do you yes. have the recipe for this? Um, yes, I think the library put it okay. out. Yes, Mary, it's on the calendar, but I can email it to you uh, separately. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No Thanks, problem. Elaine. Okay, so now if you guys have the recipe, um, you know, I do everything by eye. That's how my mom did it. I learned to do it that way after I used to start, I would measure. The one thing that I do measure um, when I'm baking or making things that are really precise is the baking powder. So we're gonna be using one, one teaspoon of baking powder. So I pretty, and then the pepper again, you want to put in as much or as little. Some people don't like pepper, black pepper, don't put it in, it's fine. You want to put in these ingredients, the dry ingredients in with the flour, and I have the flour here. Um, to, you want to put that in before. I love onion powder. So I'll, I'll do some onion powder. This calls for, oops, my battery is running low. So I'm going to go get something so that I don't lose you guys. Hang in there. How much is the 
flour. I missed it. I didn't hear. How much flour did she put in the bowl? So the flour. I'm going to email everybody the recipe right now while Myra is um, holding the program. Okay, so okay, you guys exactly. will have it in a few. Thank you. Yeah, so the flour is, um, you use two cups for every pound of saltfish. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to eat all of that. So I'm doing half right Anyway, so um, I was at two, two cups of flour. I'm doing half of everything just so I can make a smaller portion. So you're gonna put in uh, some black pepper if you like it. I like onion powder. Um, I'm not going to put in, and it's, the, the recipe calls for some adobo because sometimes when you, um, when you boil the, the salt fish, it needs a little something extra, but I'm not putting that in. So you do that and then you wanna put as much flour as you use. You wanna start with three quarters of that with, of water. So I'm using one cup of flour so just to start. Once I do that, you want to mix in all those dry ingredients. I like to use one of these little whisks. And then you want to start to put in the water. You guys can see that. Let me put this here. So you want to put in about three cups, three quarters of a cup. And then the consistency should be similar to like a pancake batter. And if it's not, then add more water. But typically it's about one to one, one cup to one cup of water, two cups of flour to two cups of water. And you just want to get that mixed in there. And if it feels so, um, it depends on how you like it. I don't like for it to be too runny because then the, the, the fritters soak up more, more oil from you know what I've seen. So I tend to, and I even like to use some of the actual water that you use to boil the codfish in. You mix that up. So you guys can see the consistency there. See that? So you do that. Actually, oh, and I got thrown off. So don't forget the you want if you're doing one cup, you're gonna do about half a teaspoon of the baking powder. If you do two cups, then you do one teaspoon of the baking powder. So I'm gonna do half. Put that in there, mix that in. Okay, and then now you want to put in your veggies. So again, whatever veggies you like, and I have literally seen people put asparagus in there, mm -hmm. broccoli, finely chopped broccoli. Um, people have changed the way you know they cook now, so it's a little different. I like the traditional type. I might add the onions and peppers, but I won't go too far. So it's about, you know, I use a handful. It's about a quarter cup for half a cup, so about half a cup of veggies if you use two cups of oil, of, um, sorry, of flour. My favorite really is, is the scallions because it tastes like potato, like um, scallion pancakes that you get from the Asian restaurants. So that's it, you put all of that in there and then you put in the crumbled um, hot fish so you wanna break it up. You can break it up with your hands. You can break it up with a fork. It doesn't matter. You can um, cut it into small, you know, like very small, finely diced if you want, or you can leave some bigger chunks. Some people like to, to taste like chunks of the codfish in there. So I will show you what I've done. So I'm gonna leave a few chunks in there. And that's what it kind of looks like. And then you just put that right in. So since I did one cup, I'm not gonna put as much codfish, I'll leave some to the side. So again, this is not you know, an exact science. 
so you don't have to worry that you're going to mess it up. It's not that easy to mess up. Now, it's really good when you see the little bubbles in there. I don't know if you guys could see them because it says that the leavening is working from the baking powder. All right, so wash my hands over here. So now, oh, does everybody like my, uh, I got a new, a new apron from Cat's Deli. I was down there getting my pastrami sandwich and I got a, an apron. I like aprons. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> love the legendary cats. I, I love, love them too. So now we're going to fry this up. That's it. That's Are you cool. firing your apron? You what like here? What is it? 1858? Established 1888. Wow. Before Cornell's. <laughs> Before Cornell. Oh, wow. Yeah. So 1909. I am tasting the catfish and it needs a little bit of um, seasoning. So I'm adding about a quarter teaspoon of adobo. Now this is my own adobo that I've made, um, but you can buy you know, adobo in the store. Um, you wanna buy the one with pepper in it. All right, so I put a little in there so that it could not taste too bland. I'm going to let that sit. You're gonna get a pan and you really want to put only enough oil to cover about an inch from the bottom. This does not call for deep frying, not deep fried. So we're gonna to get to that in a second. So what I like to do is I usually will use so depending on how big you like them. So my mom, while the uh, oil is, is heating up, my mom would make the nice big ones and they would be nice and fluffy and we'd sit down and have some bacalaitos. And my friends who didn't know what that was were like, ew, who, eat, who wants to eat fish? Kids don't like fish, but we loved it. Um, and I would love to hear what some of your guys' childhood favorite snacks are. You can unmute. My mother used to make pork rinds for us. Wow. So we would have a ham. So she would make like a big fresh ham for Sunday dinner or a special occasion. And there would be some skin left over. Mm -hmm. And um, like when she was trimming it or whatever. And she would later score that and cut it into pieces and um, broil it or bake it and we would have pork skins that was one of my wow. favorite snacks that my mother wow. made for us that's very cool so um uh, diana I, I asked love, if there's I, diana I asked if there's oil in the batter there is no oil in the batter and sal yes cats on houston it is still in business I loved ham too, but mostly because I had used the ham bone after to make lentil soup mm. or split pea soup. Delicious. Oh, I like that, Mary. If you make that, please call me. Kamaira, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like, I make uh, Indian, like vegetable fritters or cheese fritters. Mm. So we use potatoes, cauliflower, zucchini, onions and eggplant you can do any so i i usually make any spinach that's wow. my favorite spinach that's really delicious. i think we should have a like an international snack day in Takaho, okay. where everybody makes their the snacks that they grew up with and we should get to share them it's not like so nice instead day. of white flour we use a chickpea flour to make our fritters Ooh. i've never worked with chickpea flour i would like to do that okay it's very easy uh healthy the chickpea flour so that's what we use for making fritters okay and just so you guys know i'm using oil that i used yesterday because yesterday i made some sweet plantain and you guys know how much i love sweet plantain does anybody know what does anybody not know what sweet plantain look like if you don't i can show you let me show you one
So sweet plantain look like these are the sweet ones. You know what that is now, right, Mary? <laughs> yeah, so I love sweet plantain. I can eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I eat them in the morning with egg. I'll eat them for lunch with like a catfish salad. And then for dinner, we love rice beans, sweet plantain, avocado, and a person. Wow, I never had them. Oh, Mary, you've got to try this. And I'm gonna, I show, have you, I'm gonna show you how to make them. They're so easy. I'm gonna do that right now. Oh, and no, that's okay. Why not? It's easy. What I are, always see them near the bananas and yeah, the, in, in the what produce is, aisle. What is it called? Plantains. plantains. Oh, right. yeah. oh, yeah. Plantains. And I didn't is, hear you. Of course. Yeah. So the green ones are, they're not ripe. The green ones, you make what we call tostones. And Grace loves tostones. <laughs> and then the yellow ones are called maduros. So when we cook them, they're called yes. maduros, which yeah. is literally the term for rice. I had a student from Puerto Rico. She taught me how to do it. Oh, wow. Fry it in a little butter with honey. The wow. plantain. It it's it a dessert. Need, doesn't need any sweetener. So, okay. So I tested a little bit of oil, uh, a little bit of the, uh, the, the flour batter in the oil. So I'm going to pour it, I'm going to put in, I'm going to try to move you guys over. Let's see if I can do this. Um, very important to remember, you want to have a platter with a, um, I like to use a grate, like a cookie, you know, a cookie, what is this called again? It's escaping me. Um, you guys know what I mean. You want to put paper towel on the, tr on the tray and then put this on top so that you can drain. That's what I'm going to do now. So we're going to, I, I'm using a, I'm using a, a measuring cup of one fifth of a cup to make a smaller one. And so we'll see how that looks. So just pour them in and we'll see them cooking. They'll just form into little fritters. You can make them smaller, you can make them bigger. You can make, my mom would make the entire pan and we would each get one. So I like to make them smaller like this because then you can share them and not eat as much. You want them to brown, they brown very quickly so you do not want to get too far away from them. Here's the better. I'm gonna have to have Paulina come help me next time. <laughs> and yep, I'm going to move this out of the way so we can get the dish here. And then once they brown, I'm going to turn them over. Let me check them out. Not yet. And that's pretty much it. That's bacalaitos. Not difficult at all. It might take you a few times to practice doing it or you get it, you know, the way you like it, but they're not difficult at all, as you can see. And I'll show you how they look in a second. Anybody have any other questions? I'm interested in your technique. Why do you use a fork to turn over instead of like a pancake turner? Um, well, because the pan, I mean, you can use a pancake turner, but the risk that you have is that you have, then when you turn it over, it splashes. So I like, I can control better with a fork because when it gets crispy on the bottom, you can actually stick your fork in it and turn it over. Yeah. So. Thanks. I'm so glad you're doing cod because I'm allergic to meat. So oh. I would I would have had to cancel. <laughs> oh, well, every time I do something with meat, like when I made um, pastelillos or empanadas, I try to have a vegetarian or a seafood version. So always try. Tara Conti, I wish that I was in person because your son would be helping me, right? <laughs> Sarah Conti is on. 
Oh, Myra, he would always help you. That's for sure. <laughs> is my friend, is my buddy there? He just went to the restroom, but he'll be back. Okay. He, he already, he's the one that hooked up to Zoom. He was so excited to see you, Myra. <laughs> Oh, Amira, uh, uh, what kind yeah. of oil do you use? So you can use um, vegetable oil, canola oil. You don't want to use um, anything like olive oil because it doesn't have a high burn. Oh, that's um, good to know. You want to be careful not to use like olive oil because it's, it burns um, too quickly. So um, to a, a couple other things. Some people like these really, really dark and crispy. I don't. Um, I liked them when my mom made them. She would make mine a little soft in the center. I don't know why, but I like that. But if you look at how this, this one is, it's not quite so dark. Right. Um, I like it that way. But you can make them darker if you'd like. I'll make a few more so you can see. And then I'm going to actually make some sweet plantain. So that you can check it out, Mary. Again. And what is that? A quarter cup measure? This is, this is um one fifth of a cup measuring cup. One fifth? Yeah. Oh, I don't have that measuring. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can use a quarter a quarter cup. Yeah. You can definitely use a quarter cup. Um, and, and and just less. Yeah. You can use a little less, but you can use the quarter cup. My mom would use half a cup. Oh wow. Yeah. I just like to make them a little smaller because it just makes me feel like I'm eating less even though I'm not. Uh, I'll eat four of them and it'll be the same as uh, half a cup. But it makes me feel good about myself. Well, Myra, Cynthia, is, Cynthia says she's going to make this real soon. It looks yummy. Mm. And Tara said that Chris is back and wants to say hi. I'm listening, Chris. It does look yummy. And I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> well, I was I was bitten by a lone star tick, and it causes knee allergies. So, and so otherwise, I go into anaphylactic shock. Oh <laughs> no! Not a good thing. So, Chris. Oh, looks good. Hello, Madam Mayor. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Good. I'm glad that you're on. It's the highlight of his day, Lady O. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. So if you have, if, um, like right now, this, the salt um, content is very low because I soaked it twice. I um, soaked it overnight and changed the water twice. So if you have you know, high blood pressure or anything, this probably would be very good. I added a little more of the adobo seasoning in this part of the batter, just to give it a little more salt. I love scallions. Me so too. I'm, I'm glad to hear your uh, part about growing them mm -hmm. in, in your own home. That's great. Very easy to do. Try it. Yeah. Myra, I have a question about the quantity. Like, so if you were going to have, um, say if you were going to be serving four people, about how many of these would you be making? So if I'm serving, so with, so right now the batter of one cup will probably make around 12. 12 small ones. So I've already made six and there's still more batter there. So for a snack, would that be enough for like four people or just, you're just gonna, you know, have it oh, for yeah. a snack? So yeah. That's enough for four, yeah, for four people, yeah. Absolutely it is. So I'm going to make a couple more and then um, I'm going to show you guys the sweet plantain, how easy it is to make. So let me just show you, Mary. Be planting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, <laughs> I always see them, but I never know what to do with them. So I just um, to to open to peel them. You break. You cut off the edges. 
you take the knife and you run it down, not too deep, just enough for the skin to penetrate that way. And then it comes right off. See that? Peels right off. Looks just like a banana. Just like a banana, it's the cousin, the banana's cousin. Uh -huh. And then I'm gonna show you, I'm going to put them right into the oil. You don't have to, you can slice them, but I, I like to slice them on a slant. That's just how I was brought up doing it. That's how I like it. But you can, you can slice them going down um, as usually around a quarter inch thick. You want them to be somewhat thin, but not too thin, because then you'll be making plants and chips if they're very thin, which is also nice. So it's just a very versatile food. Um, we make this with, um, well, you don't eat meat, but you can make some um, codfish, stewed codfish, open it up, fry the entire banana, and then put it in the oven with the codfish in the center. You can use meat in the center and some cheese. People do that. There's just so much that you can do with it. I love to boil it and mash it and have this instead of mashed potatoes. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. So here, and I love to use the grate, this grate, because it um, allows it to stay crispy. So it's not really a dessert kind of thing, right? No, unless you use like banana fritters. This is a snack. This is a savory snack. Okay. It's savory. Yep, so we'll put these down here. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it. I learned, I learned how to make it, as I said, fry it in a little oil or butter and add uh, honey and butter, both sides. And it was very okay. good. So here I'm cutting them on a slant. Let me just show you this, see that? I just don't want to use any more plates. <laughs> so I'm cutting it on a slant and I'm used to doing this. So if you're not used to handling the knife, be careful, storing them right in there. It's how my mom did it and I have plenty burns to prove it. <laughs> and scars to prove it. So um, I've had people tell me, well, why don't you uh, use like the skin brightening or skin lightening products to, to um, remove your scars? And I said, I don't, why would I want to remove my scars? I want everyone to know I cook. <laughs> so I, I, I wear them as a badge of honor. <laughs> I have scars from opening clams. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, so now you want to look to ensure that they are brown on the bottom. You see the, the crumb line. Wow. That's so, Myra, I looked up some fun facts and consumer reports. What did you find? Plantain nutrition, a half a cup of boiled green plantains has 83 calories, 20 grams of carbohydrates, and 1.5 grams of sugar. By comparison, a half a cup of cooked white rice has 103 calories, 22 grams of carbs, and zero sugars. Although those numbers are very close, wow. plantains have a few advantages over white rice. They have more vitamins and minerals and more fiber as well. Wow. In particular, they are a decent source of magnesium, potassium, more than bananas, vitamin A and vitamin K. They also supply vitamin C and B vitamins, such as thiamine and riboflavin. And wow. a half a cup of plantains has about two grams of fiber compared with less than one gram in white rice. Wow. So there's some fun facts for you. I like that. So here hey, we go. Thanks, Elaine. So once they're... Once they're brown on both sides, it's literally been, I think, less than two minutes. You take them out. So you just pop these in your mouth? That's it. You pop them in your mouth. <laughs> you have food. You have some sweet plantains. I and would I love my Irish mother to have tasted these. <laughs> I would love for her to have tasted them too, but yeah. it's, it's a fun food also. I love this. And you don't need anything on it. Some people, I'll go to restaurants and order sweet plantain, and they will bring me a plate of sweet plantain with drizzled sugar on top. Absolutely not. There is no reason to add sugar to this beautiful you know, work of art, I call it. So 
So there you have it, guys. Some bacalaitos and sweet plantain.